Hi, and welcome to our second video from the 2020 Web Design Trends uh, video series that we're doing here at our company. My name is Maria Jose Rodriguez. I'm a design expert, and today we're going to be talking about animation. So in today's video about animation, we are going to be talking about web design animation specifically. We will first cover why animation works. Um, we will then talk about different types of animations, when to use animations in web design. We will go over some examples and then I will tell you everything you need to make sure that you get a great animation project for your brand and for your website. So animation is sort of similar to illustration, uh, which we talked about last week in the way that it works. Uh, first of all, it has a very strong storytelling element uh, because there is motion and you're going through a series of events um, or through a story. And so it really engages the viewers. Um, then, you know, it's a, it helps you visualize things, especially when you don't have a very strong imagination or you can't understand really how something works. Um, that could be a feature of a product or of a service, then animation can really walk the user or the viewer through uh, this feature or this product or whatever it is that you want to show and help them see the actual um, thing that is happening so that they get a better idea of what is happening in this product way more than text would do so. And then finally, um, Animation helps guide interaction. So as you know, everything in your website is a sequence. Um, you, you know, you want people and your viewers to scroll through information through go to your website to find the right answers and animation can help you guide all these interactions and point the user in the right direction so that they find the information that they're looking for faster. So when does animation work? It works in uh, overall for events. So the first one is to highlight an action. So for example, you want them to click somewhere, you want to make sure that they didn't leave something behind. For example, if they're filling out a form and they forgot to put in their address, you might get a little animation um, that buzzes or that you know pops up in red saying that they forgot information and you want them to take action there before continuing. Continuing. You can also use it to reveal, reveal hidden information. Um, so this is extra information that might help them uh, through their process or to find more information um, or to reveal features of your products and services that they might not see normally. And that maybe is too much information to fit your screen at an initial moment. Uh, the third time that you want to use animation is to create smooth transitions. So this can be between one page and another, or for example, when you're taking a look at a slider, uh, a gallery slider, instead of making sure that, you know, it's a block of one image that goes into another, you can make these transitions a little bit more smoother. So they're, uh, more appealing to the, to the viewer and just easier to, to, to see. And then finally, you can use animation to entertain or delight. This is somewhat similar to illustration. Um, animation can just uh, make your website seem warmer and maybe a little bit more fun or entertaining and just keep the viewer or the user more engaged throughout the time that they're in, on your website. So there are many different types of animations. We're going to cover a couple of them. Uh, the first one is micro interactions, which I already mentioned. This is when someone is taking an action um, or you want to guide them to take an action. And they are very small animations that interact with your user. Um, you have transitions, which we also spoke about. So it can be transitioned, as I mentioned, uh, between pages or content. And we'll take a couple of examples. Uh, we'll take a look at them later in the video. Then you have decorative animations, uh, which might be smaller. They don't necessarily have to be like one minute long animation. They might be uh, just uh, an icon or an illustration or a logo that moves. Um, for a couple of seconds and that just, you know, brings a little bit of delight into your website. Uh, you can have welcoming animations and that is when you open the website and or your web page and the first thing that you get is an animation that sets the tone for what your brand is and what you do. 
Um, you can have warming animations, which are very similar to micro interactions, where they will war warn um, the user that they're going, you know, that they're not completing something or that they left out some information or perhaps that they're going to be sent to a different website uh, that they might not realize. Um, so these animations help alert the user. Um, hover animations are just those animations that when your mouse hovers over a section of your website or information, something is animated. This can be something as simple as uh, a CTA button changing color to make sure to highlight that, you know, there's an action gonna, that's going to be taken uh, to something that's a little bit more about delighting the customer or the viewer. Um, and entertaining them. And finally, you have the storytelling elements, which are just animations that might be a little bit longer, that tell a story, that show a process, um, or that show a feature of one of your products or services. These are, in general, the types of animations. So with that, we are now going to take a look at different examples of animations. The first one I want to talk about is Asana, and I'll actually take you to their website so that we can take a look at some of the animations that they use. So as you can see here, we're in Asana's main homepage. And as you can see, they have a button where you can click on and it'll give you a longer animation that is uh, probably about a minute long and tells you about their services. But if you scroll down, you will also see that they have animated content that shows you what their platform looks like and the different um, setups that you can have or the different features that their project product has that you can use. Um, and it makes it really easy to see what their platform is about. Here is another example where they show a short animation. It has a little bit of element of storytelling where you know, um, it guides you from one action to another of different things that you can do and this change modifying uh, plans uh, in their platform since they are a project management platform. The second example that I wanna walk you through is MailChimp. So let's go ahead and go over to their website so we can take a look at some of their animations. So as you can see here in MailChimp's website, we have this first animation here, which is just something that delights the user. Um, it's a very short animation uh, that just gives it a nice uh, warmer feeling. And also just like in Asana, if you scroll down, you can see other examples of animation that just make the transition smoother as blocks of content pop up and images pop up. You saw that one right there. And these are the transition animations that I was talking about where different images might come and go. And you know, these are the hover animations. Um, and these just make the experience for the user or the viewer just be a lot smoother um, as they walk, as they go through your website. Another example of a great animation is Cafe X Robots Barista app. So you can see here on the screen um, how they're using a smaller icon and an animation that shows that, you know, the coffee is being made, when it's ready, when it has been built. And throughout their app, they actually have a bunch of these micro interactions that when you select, for example, uh, milk uh, and you select cow's milk, you know, it shows a picture of a cow. Um, if you press on the checkout, it shows a little cart that moves. So these are smaller um, micro interactions that help the viewer just, you know, feel entertained along, around the way. And I feel like this is one of the most common uses of animation throughout out websites um, and application. It's just having uh, the sense of delight and entertainment that makes the, the journey more pleasant. Another example of an animation you will see here is uh, in Fleet Feet Sports. Whenever you click add to the bag or you know go to the cart, the the product um, seems as it is actually going into the shopping bag, was, which is up here in the corner. Um, sometimes users don't even realize that these animations are there. They're but they do add to that sense of something is accomplished um, or an action has been taken, and it helps viewers process that information and make sure that they understand what happens in your website so that there are no surprises. Here as well uh, for the hop yard, they have uh, these icons that as you hover over the images, they, you know, highlight a little bit. Uh, and as I said, animations most of the times are just used in a way that, you know, makes selections 
easier to process, to understand, to know that you are taking action on something or that there's a clickable link somewhere within your website. Uh, another example here is just the scrolling. Uh, first of all, this welcome animation in our J-Day uh, that shows this image moving, but also as you scroll down the website, you can see elements come in and come down, uh, which makes it a lot nicer to view and a lot more entertaining than just a website that has no movement and that is completely static. So now that we've seen some examples and that you know the basics of animation, let's talk a little bit more about when not to use animation, which is really important. So you definitely don't want to use animation for really long text, uh, mainly because it makes it difficult to read. You also want to make sure that you don't animation, don't use animation uh, to distract viewers. So for example, if your main goal is to get them to fill out a form, you don't want to have a long entertaining animation or you don't want to have a, an animation that moves their direction, their, moves their, um, their view somewhere else. You actually want them to fill out the form or fill out the information or click on a CTA link or anything else. So if you're using animation uh, in those moments, they might be guided, their view might be guided somewhere else and they won't fill out the action that you want them to accomplish. Um, also, when you know they're going to have short attention spans, you want to make sure that you either don't use animation or that you keep it really short. Um, if they're not even going to be browsing to certain areas of your website, um, or that the information there is not necessarily relevant and they're just gonna look over it, then you might as well spend your money and your budget doing animations or illustrations or other um, features in other parts of your website where you actually want them to stay for a longer time. Uh, and finally, if you haven't thought about why you need animation in the first place, then you should definitely not be doing animation. Animation is not, uh, necessarily cheap all the time and so you want to make sure that you're you've thought it through and that you've chosen the right elements to animate before you do any animation so now that you know when not to use animation let's know let's go into what you can do to get it right if you do want to show animation so first of all as i was saying you want to define the purpose of adding animation to your website and ask yourself if you actually really need to animate if that's going to bring any um, added value to your website, if it's going to help your viewers, or if it's just going to distract them. Um, if you decide that you do want to do animation, that it's going to help you drive a message, then you have to take your brand voice into account. Um, most brands can use some sort of animation, uh, especially the one that is about uh, smaller interactions or even uh, just making smooth transitions uh, between elements in your website. Uh, but for example, um, let's say an accounting firm that is very serious, that uh, has the clients that you know don't necessarily want to spend time uh, and, and they just want to optimize and, you know, get faster information. Well, you know, if, if that's the type of brand that you are, a very serious brand and uh, not necessarily fun or delighting, then maybe animation isn't the right one for you. Or, you know, storytelling animation might not be the right element for you. Um, so you want to make sure you take your brand voice into account. Then you also want to take your audience into account. And this doesn't mean just, you know, uh, knowing that you have uh, audiences that are a little bit serious, but also knowing what type of browsers they use or, you know, knowing what kind of operating systems they use. Um, if from a lot of your intelligence and in whatever um, platform you use, like Google, Google Analytics or Mixpanel or any of your platforms, if, if you're seeing that a lot of your traffic comes from outdated operating systems or from old browser versions, then you definitely don't want to load up with too much information and too much animation because it will make the time for your page to load a lot longer. Um, so you want to take that into account as well when designing your website and deciding if you want to use animation or not. And then finally, you want to select the right moments and elements to animate. You don't want to animate absolutely everything because then it will become an eyesore. So you just want to make sure that you have, uh, you know, the right amount of elements that you're animating and then the rest 
are, that are static so that you don't overwhelm your viewers. Um, and then when you have, you know, decided all of this, you decided that you actually want to animate, you've thought about your brand voice, you've thought about your audience and what their needs are, and you've selected the right moments to animate, then you have to find the right designer uh, and the right programmer or teams to help you out. Uh, because it's one thing to create the animations and then it's a completely different thing to program them if you're using to do animated transitions or elements within your website. So with that, we've concluded today's session. Um, let me know if you have any questions. You can keep leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next week where we will be talking about 3D graphics in web design. Thank you very much, bye.